what you're actually doing is taking a measurement from a flat plane of your celestial sphere. That's been explained. Do, is that understood? Hypothetically stood yeah. underneath Polaris, right? At the GP of Polaris, geographical position, which is directly underneath Polaris. So directly above Polaris's GP, that's the zenith, the Polaris. And you move away from that position, your angle won't be, it'll be 90 at that point, but as you move away, it'll decrease from 90. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Brian's logic's at it again with some more sexton derp. I'll tell you, this is getting ridiculous. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Brian's going to present a number of arguments about the use of a sextant on a flat earth. He's going to tell us that the elevation change of a celestial body of one degree per 60 nautical miles as we move away from the GP of that body can actually occur on a flat earth. And of course it can't. We're going to show Brian why this is geometrically and trigonometrically impossible. He's going to tell us that altitude measurements are made using a horizontal baseline that goes all the way from the observer to the GP of the celestial body we're looking at. The GP, of course, is the point directly underneath the celestial body. That could be thousands of miles away from you. And despite the fact that every book ever written about sextants, how they work and how they're used, say something other than that, Brian is absolutely certain that this horizontal baseline must exist. Finally, he's going to tell us that the globe was reverse engineered from flat earth angles. I have no idea what that means. Neither does he, because he simply just doesn't understand it. What you're actually doing is taking a measurement from a flat plane of your celestial sphere. That's been explained. Do, is that understood? Hypothetically stood yeah. underneath Polaris, right? At the GP of Polaris, geographical position, which is directly underneath Polaris. So directly above Polaris's GP, that's the zenith, the Polaris. And you move away from that position, your angle won't be, it'll be 90 at that point, but when, as you move away, it'll decrease from 90. Now, if you keep moving away till you get to the equator region, it'll be, go down to about zero, right? Brian's argument is that as you move away from the GP of Polaris, the sextant angle will decrease and become, I think he said, about zero at the equator. I don't have any problem with that. That is exactly what happens. That's what we expect. The problem with it is it's a false analogy. It cannot and will not work on a flat earth, and here's why. Let's have a look at Polaris over the North Pole. That's the GP. And at 45 degrees, we'll be 2,700 nautical miles south of Polaris. That's 60 nautical miles per degree times 45 degrees. Because that is an isosceles right triangle, that means that the altitude of Polaris is also 2,700 nautical miles. Now let's go to the equator using 2,700 nautical miles as the altitude for Polaris and we'll find that the angle to Polaris, measured from the equator, is 26 and a half degrees. 26 and a half degrees is 1,590 nautical miles north of the equator. I'm trying to find Ecuador down here on the equator, but my sextant tells me I'm off the coast of Baja. I can't even find Central America. Let's try this. I live at 36 degrees north latitude, but a sextant would tell me I'm at 40 degrees north latitude. The sextant would tell me I'm 240 nautical miles north of my actual position. What about a guy that lives in Stockholm, Sweden at about 60 degrees north latitude? His sextant will tell him he's at 56 degrees. He's also 240 nautical miles off, only the sextant tells him he's south of his actual position. You know, we could stop right here. Altitude angles clearly will not accurately predict 
latitude on a flat earth, and the distance between latitudes would vary wildly, especially as we get near the equator. You know, this simply does not work on a flat earth. Have you got any explanations for this at all, Brian? Well, the thing about it is, is that all that time that you've moved away, every angle you've taken is a right angle. And the base of that right angle is a horizontal uh, plane because the base of all right angles are horizontal. Brian is making an argument that the altitude measurements that we're making are with respect to a horizontal baseline. Now that's a line that flat earthers have invented that would extend from the observer to the GP of a celestial body. But there's a couple of problems with this. First of all, it assumes the earth is flat and that's a begging the question fallacy but it doesn't even exist in the first place. This imaginary baseline of theirs is a reification fallacy. Flat Earth invented this baseline so that they could argue that you can't measure an angle between a straight line and a curved line. Of course you can, but we're not even doing that in the first place. When we measure the angle to a celestial body, we measure the angle between that visible body that we can see and a line which is perpendicular to our zenith. That can be thought of as a plumb line, if you wish. With a nautical sextant, that perpendicular line can be an imaginary line to a point on the visible horizon as long as we correct for dip angle, our height above the surface. But an artificial horizon can be used, or a bubble sextant can be used, neither of which even require the horizon. There is no horizontal baseline from the observer to the GP of a celestial body. That's just flat earth horse pucky. But now let's listen to another argument Brian's about to make. Brian is going to invoke perspective, the center of circles, surface distance corresponding to angular change, and then he'll stir in some nautical miles and conclude that angles are used, therefore the earth must be flat. I think we'll just call this one the making shit fallacy. So every time you've moved away, for no matter what distance you move from Polaris, you're, as, soon as, as long as you can see it and you can take an angle to it, then the baseline of that angle is always going to be horizontal. Now, Polaris will appear to drop in the sky the further you move away from it until you get to around the equator or just a bit past the equator and it'll kind of disappear then. But the problem with that is this. If you remove all perspective from that and then you take your angle that you took on the surface of Earth and you take that whole thing and put it into the centre of a circle and you then determine for every angle set distance you moved away from the ground, the geographical position of Polaris, that that as an angle, right, that that as an angle to the center of a circle, right, matches, let's say, they figure out that one degree or, or one degree matches 69 statute miles or 60 nautical miles. Now, it wouldn't have been 60 nautical miles originally because they wouldn't have been using nautical because they didn't exist at the time. These guys don't listen to anything, do they? The statute mile was defined by Parliament in 1593, and they defined it to be 5,280 feet. In 1594, a guy named Robert Hughes was the first one to talk about a nautical mile, and he defined one degree of arc of a great circle as 60 nautical miles. In other words, one minute of arc is one nautical mile. So... That means that the distance from either pole to the equator of about 10 million meters divided by 5,400 arc minutes is 1,852 meters. That's 1.852 kilometers, Nathan. Notice how easy that is? Just divide by 1,000. Now we've already seen why this doesn't work. I can't even find Central America using this flat earth model. 
The only place it would work is if I was looking for Bob the Science Guy. He's at about 45 degrees north latitude. But if I'm trying to find Mexico City, I am sh** out of luck. On the other hand, if I use a proper globe model, every measured altitude angle is going to match my latitude. If I measure an altitude angle to Polaris of 36 degrees, I am at a 36 degree north latitude. If I measure 70 degrees, I'm at a 70 degree north latitude. It always works. And it's consistent distance wise with 60 nautical miles per degree. And we can easily confirm that. And it has been confirmed millions of times. Face it, fellas, your model doesn't work. Mine does. But the point is, is that the globe is back engineered off of flat earth angles to Polaris. That's why you have an average radius of 3959 miles. So the globe has to start with flat out elevation angles. I can find my house using this method. I can't find the Gulf of Mexico using that method. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget those like and subscribe buttons down there. Click the little bell if you want notifications. Shout out to the patrons, PayPal's channel members. I appreciate everything you guys do and I'll see you on the next one.